Hi guys, so Reform UK have been in a bit of hot water over some of their candidates and their opinions posted on social media over the last few days. These are people the party had planned to put forward to win seats at the next general election. Now Richard Tice, the head of the company slash party, spoke to Reform friendly GB News about how well the candidate selection is going. Tice claimed that the party is doing a better job than the Conservatives or Labour. But have a listen to how the vetting process actually works. It's time for Reform UK leader Richard Tice. Now, Tice's resurgent Reform Party are planning to stand a candidate against a Tory in every constituency possible, but they're having a little bit of trouble with some candidate selections. Now, this weekend, Reform was forced to drop two more of their election hopefuls and suspend a third over a series of offensive remarks made online, including one slur, apparently, about brown babies. Now, the party has dropped nine candidates for the upcoming election following complaints about their comments on social media. Richard, look, welcome to the show. Yeah, I have to ask, when it comes to fielding some candidates, like in South Shropshire, apparently a slew of comments posted online, uh, some people saying that you know, Attenborough should be killed off, brown babies was one of the jokes there, yeah, making derogatory it's comments very, about... It's, it's very simple. We've always said... It's, How does it get it's, through the net? It's very simple. We've always said, if people make inappropriate totally unacceptable comments, then we will fire them. And we are the fastest uh, people to do that, the fastest political party. We don't suspend someone for six or 12 months mm. like the Labour Party. Mm. We haven't got a bunch of sexual weirdos like the Tory party. <laughs> Not that we know of. <laughs> There's still time, Richard Tice. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is insane. OK. The Labour Party and maybe the Conservative Party, but in particular the Labour Party, they have a vetting process. And the people we're talking about being suspended are MPs, people who've actually gone through the vetting process. But I don't think Reform UK actually have a vetting process. He'll get to his vetting process in a moment, but you can't compare it to the mainstream parties like the Conservatives or uh, the Labour Party. Now, weirdos and corruption get through the net but generally we're talking about people in reform uk who haven't even become a candidate yet who haven't become an mp now of course a crazy party is going to attract crazy people <laughs> it's going to attract crazy candidates that's the nature of politics Right, we've got anti-Semitism allegations the Daily Telegraph has revealed about George Galloway's party. Every party has their issues. The question is how quickly you deal with it. What? And we are the fastest. Fine. And the thing, the thing about the vetting, Patrick, which many people forget to realise, is that it's like an MOT. It's only valid the moment you do it. If someone posts someone completely inappropriate hmm. the following day... Right? Hmm. They passed yeah. the first what, vetting what process. Happens, what happened? <laughs> but that's a pile of bullshit because the people that were suspended are were suspended over comments before they became candidates. So this isn't somebody passing the MOT and then later posting something on social media and that's why they were suspended. No, it's the media and members of the public going through these people's social media po uh, posts and discovering some pretty vile stuff. At the general election, when you've got 650 candidates, for example, and then a week before, the Labour Party do a massive deep dive into half of them, and you've got a bit. It's, it's very simple. That's why we put all our names out there, about over 400, we put it out there many months early, in order that everybody scrutin could scrutinise and look into our candidates. We welcome that from whoever it is, because we said to our candidates, you've got to actually, you know, you've got to abide by our rules mm. and what is appropriate. Is it not so a risk we letting we're the not, media We're not afraid them. of that. And it doesn't matter who okay. the criticism comes from. Is, is it not a risk letting the media vet them? Because then all of a sudden... No, no, you no, end, no, you no, no it's completely the opposite, Patrick. Where, where we the, welcome... The, the, no, media, no, Patrick, the media force you into a situation where you've got to drop them. And nonsense, it's a drip, drip, Patrick, drip. nonsense. We live in a democracy where scrutiny is appropriate. I welcome the scrutiny and we will deal with it if someone says something inappropriate but let <laughs> this is ridiculous the vetting process is the media the vetting process is members of the public what a lazy party absolutely he, he... so what's the problem here the problem is that the party or company or whatever you want to call it doesn't actually have a vetting process it doesn't seem to have a vetting process because you're getting these weirdos coming into the party who have very strange ideas, very extreme positions, and eventually they're being kicked out because of social media posts and other comments. 
But these comments predate them becoming candidates. But what Richard Tice is doing here is he's saying, well, just let the public scrutinize these people. And then if they find problems, then we'll kick them out. What's the problem with that? It's much cheaper than actually hiring staff and spending money on resources to actually go through these people's profiles, try to research them. This costs this cost money and it takes time. And Reform UK don't have the time and money to vet 600 or whatever it is candidates. They couldn't be bothered. Let's just let the public do it. Now, there's a real risk here that uh, the host sort of pointed to, although he was wrong to point that it would be the Labour Party doing it. It's more likely the Conservatives that would do it because the real opponents of Reform UK are, of course, the Tory party. So the real problem that will happen is these candidates will be allowed into the party. They will be signed up as candidates. And then a week before (laughs) the general election, you're going to see all these stories about um, Reform UK candidates. Terrible stories. Look at this, what they've posted on social media. Look Look at what they said down the pub or when they were recorded or whatever. So this, if you were a a Tory party strategist what you would do is you would allow you'd keep everything quiet when it came to Reform UK and between now and the election you'd compile a lot of horrible posts about these individuals and then a week or two weeks before the general election when it's too late to remove these people from the ballot uh, flood the internet and flood the, the airways with these comments about these candidates so that it would be embarrassing and Reform UK would have to try and remove them but or distance themselves from these comments. It would be a, an absolute mess I'm trying to control my language here. So for Reform UK, they don't have a vetting process. It seems the vetting process is just allow the public to do their own research, allow the media to research these people. And the the answer to his uh the answer to this problem, it seems, is according to Richard Tice, well, we just sack people. But you can do that within a certain time frame. But as the names on the ballots are written down, as it's, as candidates are put forward and the paperwork is done, after that period, it's too late to remove these people. It's too late to fire them. And I think that's what maybe the Labour Party, but more likely the Conservatives are going to do. Because remember, the biggest threat to the Conservatives is not so much the Labour Party in in certain seats, but it will be Reform UK. And Reform UK will be pretty easy to point, you know, to, to knock out because you're going to have a, a, a protest party, basically, attracting very strange individuals. And w- as was pointed out at the beginning of this report, some of the comments are pretty vile, you know, too vile for the Reform UK party. You know, think about it for a moment, being kicked out of reform when Lee Anderson was welcomed in. It's going to be really interesting as we get closer to the election. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.